Hey there, Dr. Beth Westy here, and I'm gonna be talking about adrenals, adrenal insufficiency or adrenal overdrive. Now, a lot of people will coin this as adrenal fatigue, um, but some people don't like that word. Whatever, potato, potato, we're talking about the same thing in terms of the function of the adrenals and how well they're working for you. Now, how do you test this? How do you get this, right? Uh, Dutch testing, right? I'm a women's health and hormone expert. Um, I'm the author of the books, The Female Fat Solution and The Female Menopause Solution and host of the podcast, The Female Health Solution. And I have looked at thousands of Dutch tests, hormone tests, that show your adrenal function overall. Now, this on the Dutch test is called metabolized cortisol. This represents the total amount of cortisol produced by your adrenals. So it gives us an indicator of how well your adrenals are functioning. There are other indicators on the test that we look at. You know, I've talked about inflammation markers, other things like that that are really important. But metabolized cortisol directly responds to adrenal function. And if your adrenals are actually putting out cortisol like they should. Now, cortisol, again, is not just a bad thing. Yeah, cortisol gets a bad rap, right? People think, oh my God, cortisol is bad. I don't want it, right? No, 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 no. It's, it's like the three bears, right? Like you want a just right, just right amount, right? Like the baby bear, right? Papa bear's too much. <laughs> Mama bear's too little. No, nope, not, not enough. And the baby bear is just right, right in the middle, right in the middle, mm, producing just the right enough just the right amount, just enough to help get you up out of bed, get you the energy that you need to have normal stress responses throughout the day, yet you don't get fatigued, you don't get burned out, and you don't get wired and anxious from it. So I'm gonna talk about this difference and talk about different things that we see with people when you have either one or the other. Yes, now here's the troubling thing. Even though these are totally different, right? This is the dial that we see on the test and the black marks here, those would be the normal range, right? Okay, if you have it anywhere, that's a normal range. Um, the amount that is produced can be different depending on your age, yes, um, uh, you know, but we want a certain amount of it throughout the day. Yes, right. And the tricky thing about this is that there are times where you will have some cortisol produced and you will feel like, oh, I don't know if this is right though, I'm feeling really tired. Maybe I have the insufficiency, maybe I have the fatigue part of it, I don't know. Some of the symptoms are gonna be the same. That's why we test, that's why we look, that's why it's important we understand what your system is doing specifically so we can target it. Because there are some similarities with what we can do to help, but there's also some vast differences. So let's break it down. Adrenal insufficiency is where that dial is below range. You are not producing enough. It's pooped out. You're, this would be the textbook adrenal fatigue, right? Now, when we talk about this adrenals not producing enough, um, the thing to keep in mind here is uh, it can build up over time, right? This doesn't happen overnight. So this is like years of issues, years of slowly trying to push through being stressed, having a stressful events happen, and then existing through it. Adrenal fatigue symptoms and things like that can take three to five years to onset, meaning you could have had a really traumatic event happen several years ago, and it doesn't actually hit your system for three to five years later. I can't tell you the number of gals that I chat with when we talk about when their symptoms started. Oh yeah, well it started a couple years ago and I'll be like, okay, well what happened within three to five years of that? Anything major, anything whatever. And then, yep, they'll pop up with some really intense uh, stressful things. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> so there is that. The insufficiency piece here. This will drain you of energy. This is, you know, and I think of this metabolized cortisol sort of like um, the engine in your car. So you try and get in your car and it looks fine. Looks like you can go places, but you don't actually get going anywhere. Really hard to get up and go. Really hard to make it to the store. Can't even make it to the gas station to refill your tank. Yeah, just exhausted all the time. You physically don't have the power there. Now you also will be um, exhausted with your muscles, like your arms and everything. Your brain is gonna be exhausted. Just total depletion, right? And you can make it through your day. Oh, so many women make it through their day and they just exist, but you've been existing from a depleted state for a really long time. This here in overdrive, you will also feel fatigued. 
you will also have exhaustion. But this is like you have an engine in the car that overheats. So you get in the car and you're like, oh look, the engine started, this is great. Look, I'm gonna go to the store, fantastic, yay. And you get halfway there and you're like, whoop, engine overheated. I'm not going anywhere. It is very misleading, very misleading. You can do certain things, certain activities, get started with stuff, feel motivated at some times, but then completely crash and burn. The phrase wired but tired describes this. Wired but tired. You will also have anxiety issues um, sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's at night. It's like you can't even control when you're gonna go in this overdrive because it's there all the time. Now this is oftentimes your body in a fight or flight state. Your body working through a lot of times even emotional things that have happened. Those emotional things show up in the physical body and we see it on a Dutch test. Yeah. So this overdrive is exhausting as well but it's just different. Now here's the difference when we work with these things. Again, there's other factors that go into this. It is bio-individual, like when we go through your Dutch test, so if you are looking at getting a Dutch test, you're like, one of these sounds like me more than the other, but I wanna make sure, yes, yes, let's make sure, let's make sure. Go below this video, click the link, get a Dutch test sent right to you. We will go over it, we will talk about what we're seeing, and then we will develop the right plan for you moving forward. So, in looking at these two, is getting enough rest for both of them important? Yes, right? Is, um, is activity level important? Yes, but it, they're also different levels of activity. For this, we start real slow, real slow, going for a 10 minute walk. And when you can do that really well, you can go for a 15 minute walk, right? We slowly build that level up. For here, you can do a little bit more with activity, but you have to give yourself more frequent breaks. Like you could work out for 30 or 40 minutes as long as you have breaks as long as you have good breaks in between and bring your heart rate down fully. Because your heart rate recovery can be different here versus here too. Those are other things that we watch. Other biometrics that we do to make sure we're maintaining. Now, similar things that we do between both of them are making sure you're getting enough protein, making sure you're getting enough nutrients, making sure you're utilizing adaptogens. Yes, yes, yes. But again, you wanna make sure that you are doing the right activity and rest time for each. Because they are different, they need to be focused differently for you. That way you don't burn yourself out more or you don't push yourself too hard. I had somebody, um, this was a couple of months ago, where she, she honestly, she pushed so hard. She started to get a little bit of energy back because we were tiptoeing back with this. Pushed herself so dang hard that she couldn't, couldn't get off the couch for days. Like literally was so exhausted and fatigued. Her muscles hurt so bad and I was like, yeah, you overdid it. You had a little bit of progress, a little bit of energy, and then you just thought, oh, I'm gonna make it happen. Whew. That's gonna be a setback. So that's what we have to really guard against and be really careful with, with adrenal insufficiency. So when we know which level you have going on, when we know what your adrenals are doing, we can make the right recommendation so that you can progress faster and keep from making mistakes that would provide you with setbacks. So go in the show notes, um, check everything out. Let me know if you have questions. Please leave a comment. I do check the comments. But if you're not comfortable leaving a comment, do not hesitate to reach out to me personally. And I can't wait to see what your levels show on your test.